guys. Welcome to a brand new episode of the RSL show. We're going to break down the League's Cup results and we're going to keep this one just super brief because I think everyone is excited about the results. This team is in form. Seattle came to play. They came with a stacked roster. So did Real Salt Lake. So we're going to break this down. My name is Andy Munoz. I'm joined with Joshua Clark. Josh, how you doing, dude? Dude, wonderful cloud nine. Happy <laughs> as a clam, my guy. Hell yeah. And we've got Alex Napolis uh, with us as well. Alex, how are you? Doing great, man. Everything Everything's looking good. Heck yeah, dude. So let's talk about Real Salt Lake and their current run of form. A lot of people online, on Twitter, social media, people who don't even follow the team are starting to see these glimpses of promise uh, from what adding you know players like Chicho and having the chemistry align what it's doing to this club I'm, I'm seeing people from the outside that are saying that this is a cup contending team and probably not just stuck within the the confines of leagues cup or probably mls cup and so i'm going to kind of open up this discussion and i know we don't want to jinx anything but do you think that this team has what it takes to go far in this competition and for the mls cup alex let's start with you yeah, it seems uh, over the course of the last couple of months, RSL has really found an, an identity, um, and they're sticking with it. The quick counter, um, the counter press, um, it's working. It's working marvelous right now for Rousel. Like, and if they can continue this form and just continue to play uh, the way that they're playing, uh, this team is destined for some big things. Yeah, I'd say really barring injuries um, or multiple, you know, red cards, suspensions, and things like that. But we, yeah, we're a contender, and it's weird to say that. I'm gonna knock on some wood right now, uh, but but the team the team we've seen the last month and a half, two months is probably the best RSL team I've ever seen play. I, I will say that it's the most entertaining, that's for sure. Yeah, I gotta agree with you, man. And that's no disrespect to you know former clubs and former teams that we've paid respects to multiple times, right? We we think about. Obviously, uh, like the Nick Ramondo, Kyle Beckerman era, um, Nat Borchers era, even Will Johnson eras, Olave eras. Uh, clearly, that's a good team. But for the state of Major League Soccer, for all of the components, all the moving pieces, all of the players transferring over to this league, I really do think that we have one of the best rosters Um that are sharing the best chemistry and they're showing that result or excuse me, they're showing that through the results they're getting. So we'll break down leagues cup. And before we really dive into the goals and then pick our favorite goal of the three, uh, let's talk about this roster. And there's one uh, there's, there's actually an observation that I made with Josh before you hopped on here, Alex, even with a starting lineup that does not include Crylock, we've got, I mean, I've got full confidence in this roster and it's stacked. So we've got Musovski and Arango up in the front. I love that. Uh, I love how the two are pairing and creating plays for each other. And Musovski has, I think for me, has probably been one of the best breakout players uh, since his introduction to Real Salt Lake. And then in the midfield, we've got Diego Luna. Well, technically on the wing, Pablo Ruiz, Brian Ojeda, Savarino, which by the way, looks like Savarino is invested in this squad. It looks like he's having fun and he's got to be when you're getting that type of service, uh, which we'll break down in a minute. And then when we go back to the defense, we've got Oviedo, Vera, Silva, and Nelly, and Nelly, which I'm super impressed with. Uh, he had a few shots on goal. And then we've got uh, McMath. Uh, which right now, McMath and Beavers, dude, killer goalkeeper pairing, uh, one backing up the other. It, it Like, we just have so much depth, and that's something that we just didn't have in the past. So, Josh, we'll, we'll open it up for you, man. What are your feelings on having this deep of a roster and a team that uh, is, I think, is scary, right? Like, when you see this lineup, like, you know that Real Salt Lake is showing up to play. Right. It's a, <clears throat> obviously it's a change, right? We've always been told in the past, you know, this is the deepest RSL has ever been. 
And I think every single year we hear that. And every single year it does get deeper, right? The new guys come in, draft picks come in, surprise, some money spent. But this year with, with the incoming transfers and really emergence of another draft pick, it, it genuinely is the deepest team. Uh, I, and I think, you know, what, what goes, what goes to show that is, you know, last night was a prime example, Marcelo Silva out with a, a very well-deserved red card. Um, and in the past that that's doom and gloom for us, right? We're all going, Oh man, who's on the bench? How can we do it? And, and lo and behold, Justin Glad comes off the bench, right? He, yeah, he's your starter, but you had Marcelo Silva and Brian Vera who are both solid starters as well. And, you know, later on in the, in that game, you had Bodie Hidalgo, you had Anderson Julio and Ruby Robin come on the field. The the fact that one of those is a homegrown that has just vastly improved and and doesn't make you worry about the game comes on, and then two of your former starters come on. Like it, it's it's deep. It's not like we're getting guys with with no minutes coming on in these games, and it's going to get to the point where you know, guys are going to get left out of the 18 that don't necessarily deserve to be left out. And that's a great thing. Yeah. I want to talk about the sub, the substitution or like the bench, uh, which is crazy dude, because I'm just going to read these names off and, and just look at my face as I read these. I know the people listening can't see that, but check this out. So we've got Beavers goalkeeper. Uh, we've got Demir Krylock on the bench, Andres Gomez, uh, Scott Caldwell, okay, it's there. Nelson Palacio on the bench. Um, Rubio Rubin, right, which we clearly saw came on and got his goal. But you still have Justin Glad on the bench. Uh, like you mentioned, Hidalgo, Gomez, Yakison, still a great player. Uh, Lawfulsund as well. And then Anderson Julio. I, it, it, it could go either way for me. You could completely flip the starters in the bench, and I feel like we'd still be contenders in this match. So, Alex, what are your thoughts? Same. Same question for you, man. Depth roster, and then we'll start breaking down goals. It's fantastic. Um, you look at that bench, and uh, I remember in previous seasons, we would be in a situation where we need someone to inspire off the bench, someone to come on and give us a little extra offensive push and we didn't really have firepower coming off the bench but now you look at this you look at that the bench that you just named you got and um anderson julio who is on a scoring a uh, hot streak right now you got rubio rubin who just basically single-handedly took guatemala to the uh out of the group in in, Co- in copa oro and he's translating that with a goal last night um you got young guys like lawfelson hidalgo who will come onto the pitch and basically kind of locked down a game for you and we saw last night so all good things um great depth uh for this team and you you just love to see it are we a little are we a little shocked that Real Salt Lake appeared to just kind of go in all in on this uh league's cup with the roster that they put out because I, I I guess in comparison to what we put out before, which I, I don't have like the starting roster. And obviously clearly the roster was a lot different back then, but when you see this kind of lineup, is this sending a message that we're uh, wanting to go deep in this? You know, absolutely. And you got to remember this is unlike the open cup where we're playing in between league matches. This, this is a few weeks of leagues cup only. So for me, it's important to put out your, your full strength squad, right? Because you don't want to take a month off in the middle of your season. That's a, that's a quick way to fall off any kind of streak, right? Not only that, I think the team wants to win as many pieces of silverware as they can, and I think they're confident they can. Plus, you know, let's not mention the the 40 million pot at the end of the, the rainbow here if we win, and, you know, winning what could be a very prestigious tournament as an MLS side. Like, I think they have every reason to go after this full bore. Yeah. I I remember in the beginning when they introduced League's Cup, it was felt like, oh, great, here's another tournament. It's MLS just doing MLS, just trying to, um, you know, bring in the viewers or, you know, a lot of, I, I feel like some people had just called it, uh, I don't know exactly the verbiage, but just kind of, you know, here's another tournament that we shouldn't care about. It's just, you know, Liga MX versus... MLS but like you said Josh like now it's like why not add 
more silverware. And it, it, it's, it's starting to feel like this competition is being taken serious. And uh, clearly, we saw it the other day, Messi, Inter Miami, uh, debuting, which was just a, an amazing uh, result. Amazing, not only for all of MLS. It's weird, man. Like, I myself, I'm a Cristiano Ronaldo fan, but I appreciated every moment of Messi coming on and uh, taking it to Cruz Azul and getting that amazing free kick, which we could talk about if you guys would love to. But yeah, it's it, 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 why not take it serious? And we saw that with Sounders. Sounders bringing all of their fundamental key pieces. You've got Rui Diaz, Albert Rusnak. You've got both Roldan brothers, Joe Paulo. You've got Yamar, um, just to name a few. You've got Stephen Fry, uh, which I always it always it always uh, psychs me out a little bit to see him still in the league a little bit. But this. I'm just kind of spitballing here, but this league, Leagues Cup, this competition is actually exciting. Absolutely. Well, it, and it, it's different now t- um, because if you look at the original formats of Leagues Cup where they did like, where they selected, you know, only a few teams from each league to go in and play like quarterfinals straight to the final. Um, and then the showcases p- uh, post COVID, those weren't exciting. Those, those didn't feel those didn't feel like they have the hype and, and the excitement that the, that they have today where you have every team from both leagues come in head to head uh, for that trophy. It's a great point, man. And I, I think the term that I wanted to find was like, oh, here, here's a kitty cup. Right. And that's kind of what it felt like, because, yeah, we did play uh, a couple of Mexican teams. And uh, Josh, I think you said on the last episode or on Twitter, um, but it was Tigres who we played when Petke had the crazy fallout. Um, yep, that can. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, yeah, got canned. So what what uh, what did we like about this match? What did we not like about this match? Um, again, a lot of people on Twitter saying that this is one of the most well-put-together performances that we have seen by Real Salt Lake, an unrecognizable team, which I have to agree. Uh, How would you guys feel overall about the match and let's dive into goals. I mean, imagine what the scoreline would have be had we had a confident, you know, official. You know what I mean? I think that was my least favorite part. Um, he let the teams get away with a lot, but at the same time, you really didn't know what a foul was because he was just kind of randomly calling them as he pleased. There was no rhyme or reason. And I'm not even going to get into the Marcella red because that was clearly a red, but outside of that, uh, yeah, the best performance I've seen out of RSL, even with 10 men, even with 10 men, Seattle didn't know how to handle our counter press. And we didn't necessarily change our style of play as well. Yeah, we dropped a little deeper, but, you know, we, we kept the press going and we kept, you know, going after Seattle and going for their throats. And that's exactly what we needed to see. Had we sat back too much, right? Seattle could have easily nicked a goal or two, but you know, we never say die apparently. Yeah. And I think in, in previous, previous teams and you see it um, around, around a lot of teams, when you go down a man, it completely changes for most, most people. Um, and then Seattle in, in it, it felt like an arsenal of old would have let Seattle back into that game going down a man, but they didn't give up even up, even down a man rounds like was still the team with, I feel like with the most dangerous opportunities and with the most clear opportunities. And even obviously got the goal late in the game um, from Rubio. Um, and so that's just huge credit to the guy's mentality, huge credit to the team for, for just not giving up, keeping their foot on the gas, despite going down a man. Um, and then I basically just kind of want to echo what Pablo said in the post game presser is these guys are full of joy right now playing this game and you can see it on the field. They're having fun. They're playing fun. Um, and it's just amazing to watch this Ross Lake team evolve right in front of our eyes. Well, and, you know, all credit to Pablo as well, right? We we were getting really annoyed with his Ted Lasso-esque uh, cadences and whatnot. But you know what? They've worked. And, enough. yeah, you know, and he, you know, he always said goals change games. And it was, you know, everyone kind of reacting like, yeah, well, no, no shiz, right? Um suddenly we get Pablo a striker and we're scoring multiple goals and the games are definitely changing. So credit to ownership there as well for going out and spending the money on, on the piece we needed. Do you want to apologize to Elliot fall? 
Uh, no, I never said Elliot out. <laughs> I don't think we ever did, right? No, we never did. I, I mean, we we were getting a little ornery, you know. Um, but I think we also realized that he can't make the final decision with signing the check. Sure. Right. So it was a case of, are we getting the support or are we not? So if I did say it, yeah, sorry, Elliot, but you know, if we start to suck again, I'm going to come after you again. So, yeah, you know, well, let's break down the goals. And the first one came in the 47th minute uh, through the middle, beautiful link up play. So this one starts with uh, a pass just before the half line. Uh, up to Chicho, and Chicho kicks it over to Musovski. Musovski then gives it right back to Chicho. He gets a touch on it, and then Chicho just slides with both feet just to attempt to get the ball in, and it just takes a lucky bounce, and Savarino is there to just finish it beautifully. I think some people were a little bit uh, maybe thinking that it could have been offside. Clearly wasn't, didn't get pulled back. But we're going through the middle, and there's beautiful link-up play, and it leads to a goal like this. So, Alex, what are your thoughts, dude? I want to go back even further to the play that led to the goal. We talked about it in the last podcast um, about how this team is just hitting on a, on a quick counter-press, quick counter-attack, and playing it forward right away and hitting on transition. And I think we're watching this Rouse Lake team becoming one of the better teams in transition uh, in Major League Soccer, which is something that we I feel like we didn't really see in the past. Um, Seattle has a good opportunity at, on the other end. Um, shouts for a foul, too, on Marcelo. But we end up winning the ball back. We get it upfield right away, right through the middle. Chicho dribbles it a couple of yards, um, has that opportunity, splits defenders beautifully, um, and then Sava just cleans it up at the end. But it's 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 100% um, a quick counter, counterattacking football at its finest, and it's – Ralph Lake, like I said, they're becoming one of the better teams in transition in this league. Well, and and back to that, you know, would be Seattle foul that they were crying for. It that was my favorite part of that goal because in the first half, there were three or four times that uh, old Jackson Reagan dragged or pushed or stiff armed, you know, Chicho down in the box, and you know nothing came of it. In fact, there was a, a fairly a fairly aggressive tussle. Uh, at the end of the first half there I'm surprised the Seattle player didn't get sent off, but to, to, you know, for them to get away with all these fouls, then start screaming like petulant children that they are um, at the referee after this one, they even, they, they went as far as like holding onto the ball for a solid two minutes before they would restart play because they didn't believe the referee was, you know, checking VAR or whatever. So I thought that was quite hilarious, but yeah, back to your point, the, the counter attack, was just beautiful, right? Chicho never gave up. Savo was in the right spot. Just thing of beauty. So not even two minutes later, uh, again, it's coming from a counter. Uh, we've got Pablo Ruiz, who just finds not even an open Chicho. He's marked the entire time, but just floats a ball. Uh, I, I couldn't even guess how many yards up to Chicho. Chicho goes one-on-one. Puts this guy's on, puts the dude on skates. Has a, I wouldn't even say a, a good angle, but just bags the second goal. And I mean, we we have to acknowledge just how good Chicho is because I don't think that in the past, at least in the maybe like the last six to eight years, we've had a forward that is this confident on going one on one with a defender and still taking a shot on target. I, I feel like if that was anybody else. What would they they would have gone down. They would have gone down with the contact. They would have gone down with the contact, or they would have at least done some held up play and wait for everybody to come up. And Chicho says, no, I'm going to do it myself and takes this. And that's, it's just, dude, it's such a beautiful goal. And I think that when you look at what Chicho can do, it's just something that you haven't seen from any RSL forward in a long time. And that, ju- that, to me, makes me a little bit more confident that this team can contend for trophies. Absolutely. And, you know, again, with the – I think I tweeted poetic justice, but Reagan was the guy that was all over Chicho in the first half, fouling him, stiff-arming him, grabbing his shirt. So for Chicho to, you know, put him on his ass essentially and score a goal one-on-one, it, it was – there's, you know, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. 
Beautiful, bro. Alex, what are what were your thoughts, dude? I mean, you you saw this one uh, live. You were there. Um, what was the eruption like, man? And and what was the reaction initially to that goal? I mean, you get two goals back to back like that um, within two minutes of each other. Um, it's amazing. You, your fans are still buzzing from from the first one, and then all of a sudden you have this big opportunity from Chicho Arango, um, and the buzzing continues, and it's. Um, just two minutes of absolute brilliance from Real Salt Lake um, to get those two goals quickly. Best part about it is Pablo Ruiz made that pass from inside our own 18, uh, uh, 18 box. And you don't really see that often, right? He just floats one over. Chicho just uses his speed to get past Reagan. Um, like Josh said, he put him on skates and uh, was able to, to, to make it too. And, I, I said it in the last podcast, I don't think Seattle was going to be ready for, for this new Real Salt Lake, and it definitely seemed like they weren't. They had no response to Chicho. They had no response to um, our counter. Uh, even Schmetzer on the sideline looked like he had no, he had no response uh, for this Real Salt Lake side. Are you guys feeling, somebody pointed this out, the intensity when Real Salt Lake plays against Colorado, like the rivalry is just fizzled. When they play against SKC, that's also kind of fizzled. It feels like the rivalry now is Sounders with Real Salt Lake. Do you feel like that's a stronger rivalry than the other two teams that I just said? Um, I think it's a different rivalry. I think historically we've been good at the same time. Uh, they've obviously had more better, like brighter years, but yeah, I think we're. I think it's really. It's not necessarily a rival. It's more of a. I just don't want to lose to you, right? It's nothing personal. I just. I just don't want to lose to you. Are you sure it's not personal? Because I mean, they, feels, they, I don't know. They poach I, the staff. They poach the players. I guess that is personal, huh? Yeah, I don't know. This one's weird. It's it's not like a. It's a different kind of rivalry. But yeah, I think it's always been a heated matchup. I've I can't really think of any like RSL Seattle games that weren't fairly intense. I'll say this about this Seattle Ross Lake matchups. When you look at the scrum that happened at halftime, um, you look at the situ- situations like that. Those are the type of situations that create the ri- create rivalries, right? You know, you, you got you got guys who are going at each other. They they're probably going to go at each other next time they face each other, and that's that's kind of the intensity that brings a rivalry um, to kind of games like this. Um, you, we saw it with like Roger Spinoza and Kyle Beckman for the longest time. Yeah, I think I think our current guys need to find their their counterpart, right? Like their villain, right? We had Ozzy and Kyle, we had Espinosa and Kyle, we had uh, Failhaber and Kyle. You know, we got we got to get you know Paulo Ruiz or Ojeda at someone or Glad at someone or you know Chicho and and old Reagan. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know how? I mean, I feel like everyone's rival at this point is. LAFC, right? Uh, I'm not looking at a schedule. I don't know uh, when or if we'll be matched up with them again, but um, it feels like maybe that's an internal rival of rivalry because I don't think LA. Well, actually, I don't know. LAFC fans have come at us before. Well, we've had moments between the two clubs as well, so yeah. I think there's a little bit there. There's a little bit there, but yeah, I'm feeling a little bit more heated rivalry now. If we go to the 59th minute, um, there was a, there was a stretch in time where we knew Marcelo Silva was going to get carded or at least commit some kind of foul. Usually it's inside of the penalty box. Uh, dude, this one's like near the halfway marker. W- what's he thinking with this tackle, dude? I mean, I, I love the intensity and I love the hustle and I love the slide tackle, but obviously it goes very wrong for him. Um, goes in dangerously into Rui Diaz, who is an MLS star. So, you know, the, the referees are kind of, you know, looking out for him, but this is a blatant, just ill-timed foul. Uh, looks really bad on the replay studs up just right into his right shin. What do you think Silva's thinking there, man? What, how can he compose himself better in moments like these? Um, I, I don't think it was intentional. Um, I think this is a side effect of, there's a lot of emotion in this game to this point. And it's a side effect of how we play, right? When you're playing a very high press, a very high counter press, you you have to be in your opponent's face the second they touch the ball. And, and I think that's really all it is, is, is Silva didn't want to lose that ball. 
he he wanted RSL to maintain possession or get possession back, and he went in for it, and it just was unfortunate that his studs were up. I think had his his toes been pointed or whatever, uh, that's not a red card, right? Because he does win the ball, but it, it's just it's unfortunate, but it happens. I'm I don't think it was malicious. I, I don't want to see Seattle fans coming at us and saying that you know Marcelo needs to be banned from the league forever, like they've done with other RSL players. So yeah, uh, it's just an unfortunate tackle. It's a red, but it's a it's a soft red, right? Um, I don't. It, it, when, anytime you go in with this, anytime you go in with the studs up like that, it's it's going to be a red card no matter what. And um, you, obviously, you don't see that at first glance in the stadium, uh, but the, the replays definitely showed it. It's it's a hundred percent a red. Um, I also I also want to point out that this is Marcelo Silva's first red card in three years, um, so he was due. Yeah, his first his first few. <laughs> Fewer uh, years were card happy. I don't necessarily see him as a red card liability, but not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, yeah. three years. So it's crazy how, dude, three years just time flies, huh? And time flies, especially when we're having fun now. Um, I don't know if there's any other key moments that we want to go over, or if we just want to go up to the 87th minute with uh, Anderson Julio's beautiful. Um... I, I just want to bring up the, the combo play between Ojeda and Anelli for what could have been Anelli's first MLS goal because that was pretty. Yeah. He's got to give shouts out to that, right? We don't need to get into it, but but shouts. Yeah. I had seen that. Um, I had seen that strike. And, yeah, I mean, just, dude, people contributing from all uh, aspects, all positions. Uh, when you have a team that can confidently take strikes like that and put them on target, it's it's great. Like it's it's well, good, and and not to mention the movement on and off the ball that's leading to these chances. Go back and watch this game and watch the interchange between Ojeda, Luna, Oviedo, right, Chicho. At some points, you don't know who's playing where because they're all over the place, and that's a big big help for our or a big key to our success lately. Holy cow, that was difficult. And, and go back to the depth conversation that we were having earlier. Um, obviously, we're going to be talking about the Chichos and the Savas uh, and, and, you know, the goal scorers and the Lunas. But there's so many underrated players that I don't think get the love and, and the attention that they deserve because of the way that they're playing. Um, like a Mecca Nelly, who's been absolutely blossoming into this fantastic, fantastic player right before our eyes. Um, guys like Brian Ojeda, who's become such a pivotal piece to that midfield alongside Pablo Ruiz, who is still very underrated in the eyes of the league of what he's contributing and doing to this, to ourselves for the attack. Yeah, I agree, man. It's, it's a whole different Real Salt Lake. It's a whole different mentality. And, uh, it, it seems like the, the skill and the talent of the players maybe took a little bit of time to. Uh, connect with like Pablo Mastroini's message. And I guess that's where the patient maybe paid off with Pablo. There are prior episodes where we, we did go at Pablo a little bit because he, he kept, I feel like he kept a lot of the answers pretty surface level when the results weren't going our way. But now that all the puzzles, uh, the pieces of the puzzle are connecting, we're happy. You can't not be happy. And this is great soccer. Absolutely. We opened up an episode one time, literally saying this is boring soccer. This is yeah. hard to watch. It's hard to cover this team. And now it's a blatant contrast. It's so much different. It's exciting. It's fun. It's a legitimate breath of fresh air. Like, <sighs> I haven't been genuinely excited to consume RSL, right? Yeah. yeah. In a long, long, long time. Yeah. And I'm actually motivated to go pick up like the new home kit and throw Chicho on there. You know what I mean? I got one already. <laughs> yeah, see that's that's what that's what it does. I mean, we're yeah. we're media, we're the blog boys as Trey Fitzgerald uh, alludes to all the time. Uh, even we're like, dude, let's pop in there and and buy some stuff. Uh before we break down Rubio Rubin's goal, uh you guys linked up with the RSL team store. Uh I wish I could have made that. I couldn't. I was working, but uh, you guys looked great, man. You guys looked handsome. You guys. Uh... Oh, there's there's plenty more. I think we did like ten outfit changes. Really? Uh, it was a very very sweaty day, uh, yeah. so I feel bad. But was it just Royals gear? Or was it also RSL gear? All sorts. All, All sorts. sorts. Yep. So if you guys haven't seen, go follow at RSL Team Store. 
or just uh, you know follow us on our sell show. Uh, we have a really good relationship with the team store. They've always uh, done giveaways with us. They've always hooked us up with uh, stuff to give away. I know I just said the same sentence twice, but uh, they invited the RSL show dudes to come on over and take some photos and some merch. Uh, they wanted a little bit uh, different, um, I guess, demographics of fan bases. And we hit those, man. We're very diverse here at the RSL show, not only in cultures, but in waist sizes. So uh, <laughs> keep an eye out for that. Uh, love the team store. Make sure you uh, follow them, RSL Team Store. Pop in, go buy some stuff. Say, let them know the RSL show sent you. I need to mute myself for a second. Sorry. Cool. It's all good. So uh, it's just me and you, Alex, for a moment. Um, let's break down Rubio Rubin's goal, which I feel like it's been a, a long time coming, um, especially in a competition like this. Rubio Rubin comes in, links up. Uh, with Anderson Julio, who was also subbed in. The first touch from Rubio deflects up or it goes up, and Anderson Julio does an amazing job of just trapping this ball, Uh, gets inside the box. I want to say his pass wasn't the most perfect pass because it does deflect off of the Seattle defender, but it it, it takes enough of a touch to get right into the path of Rubio Rubin, who then gets a touch... And doesn't just decide to strike it, does a little spin move inside the box and then lays it in and scores the goal. So what, I mean, I know we've had so many opinions on Rubio Rubin and his purpose and role on this team, but let's break that down. Do we, do we want to keep someone like Rubin on the squad? And are we, are we happy that he got the goal? I hope he has a similar situation to what happened to Diego Luna. Diego Luna went to the U20s, came back a brand new player. Um, and I hope Rubio, I hope the same thing happens to Rubio. Um, I hope he just came off the Gold Cup, uh, helping Guatemala reach the um, the knockout stages, coming back, gets that goal um, in his first appearance back. And I just hope it just breeds confidence and he just keeps working from there, um, similar to what we saw with uh with diego um and just have again another goal scorer coming off the bench um it's gonna be huge and uh super happy for rubio yeah i also hope you know he can continue to ride this confidence and whatnot but i hope he can also accept whatever role he's given right he's in a competition with a bunch of guys that are in form but if he can also keep his form coming off the bench much like julio then this team is just even more dangerous than than we are now Um, so my hope is Rubio accepts, accepts his role, right. And, and doesn't try to look for a move or something like that and, and sees how far we can go really. Cause if we can keep him in form and, and hitting on all the cylinders along with Rubio, with Sava, with Chicho, with Demir, with Musovsky, right? Like that's never ending options there. Yeah. Dude, you gotta be hyped, man. If you're front office, if you're Pablo Mastroini, dude, you gotta be hyped, bro. It's, it's it's hard to predict where the goals are coming from uh, before it's, you know, we would just look to Demir Savarino, um, maybe a PK, <laughs> maybe a PK, but now it's like, dude, you have so many, uh, you know, just so many shooters, right? Like you've got so many uh, people trying to get on the scoreboard and uh, let's just remind ourselves that, you know, Justin Glad is, is up there in that number two uh, as one of our defenders. And so it is refreshing. It's promising. It is, uh, it's almost like a little fairy tale start or I guess mid push uh, to what could be a really great season for Real Salt Lake. Before we wrap this up, and we're going to go over uh, Twitter questions because we did ask some yesterday and there's some really good input there from the fans. We, we love you guys. Thank you guys for participating. I want to do a quick temperature check on us to see what we expect or I guess what would make this season a successful season for Real Salt Lake have we already achieved it or how far do we need to get where where would you be happy with the season ending um I'm gonna go because I have one on my mind uh big big thing is gonna be beating Monterey next week that's a big one on a successful season for me if we can beat Monterey and Seattle, finish top of our League's Cup group, 
right? Huge. And then a home playoff game, right? And honestly, I'm going to aim high right now because we can. Uh, an Open Cup final as well. So getting out of the group at the top in League's Cup, Open Cup final, winning that bad boy. Messi or no Messi, I don't care. And hosting a home playoff match. Th- those are my my metrics, so to speak. Maybe I have my bar set a little bit higher than Josh. Um, hey, I'm I'm still a pessimist, <laughs> right? At heart, it's still there. I think, I think a quarterfinal appearance for for us, like in the League's Cup, um, should Yeesh. be should be necessary, should be required, um, especially with the way that how this team's playing. There's no doubt that a final uh, Open Cup final should be required for this team. Um, and I'm going to go as far as to even say that I want to see this team in the Western Conference final. Um, and see what they I'm not going MLS Cup yet, but I think MLS Cup final should be should be um, should be a bar for Real Salt Lake. Yeah, I think if we don't win the Premier League this year, it's a failure. So, <laughs> <laughs> dude, um, yeah, I think I think for me, I'd, I'd have to go with Alex. Um, I oh, want I, I want a final. Yeah, I want a final appearance out of the regular season. Uh, I want to see this team at MLS Cup. Um, not just go to the West Western Conference Final, but let's let's clean it up, let's bag it up, and let's get to an MLS Cup. I think that'd be a huge, huge success. And uh, you know, if they win, then we quit the podcast, right? We already said we're retiring, Josh. Um, and I think uh, you know, Open Cup Final uh, for me, yeah, it's weird, man, because. You don't. It's it's weird for for any competition regarding, you know, most teams that you follow. You don't really tend to care until you get to the final, and then it becomes real, right? Because all the hype hits, all of the marketing hits, um, everybody is just so invested in a final. Um, but I think if we if we go to an Open Cup final, and if we go to an MLS Cup final, uh, then I'm hot on rail Salt Lake, and I'm happy. Uh, not even taking into account what what the actual results would be out of that. Um, League's Cup final for me, it's whatever, man. It's cool. It's a fun competition. I, I know it's like a it, like you said, Josh. It, it gives us a month of soccer to keep our people fresh. Um, I don't know. I, I want to say I don't care about it, but also I think the League's Cup trophy is actually pretty cool. It is pretty dope. It is pretty dope. So, pretty dope. so that's that's what it is for me, man. I think. Uh, we're all on that same consensus, right? Like we're, we're not going to give up on RSL and just say that they suck if they don't win an MLS cup uh, because we're, we're realists and anything is a big improvement from the last couple of years. However, I will say that when we went to the Western conference final and lost it, that was pretty disappointing. Uh, Especially the way that, that we rolled into the next season, expecting that we were going to use that momentum and come back stronger, and then we just fizzled. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was pretty tough and pretty. It was a it was a big letdown, and we let everybody know it. Cool. So here we go. We know we got Monterey coming up next. That's going to be a fun game. I hope we trash Monterey. Um, the the Mexican teams are good, man. Cruz Azul did a pretty good job against Miami. Um, up until Lionel Messi came in and just out dribbled four defenders like no problem uh, between him and Busquets, bro. That was insane, dude. That just what an insane match. But um, I don't know. Do we want to even touch predictions or do we just want to kind of go into this one and just kind of see what happens? I mean, Monterey is listed as the number one favorite team to win the League's Cup. So, you know, I think we beat them. I think we do. I think if we keep this momentum up, dude, I think we got a good chance. Yeah, so, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a whooping, but I think it's going to be it's going to be a win. And you know the Monterey side, dude. Like you know, you know they came here and, and beat us. They they've got the history, right? They know. I have a feeling that everyone is invested in the history on this one. They have to be. Yeah, and, and like we talked about last time, you hope you hope uh, they're all sitting in the film room watching, you know, the Champions League final, and Kyle and Sabo cry on the field. Don't let that be you guys. 
Get some redemption. Yeah, redemption time, revenge time, baby. So, after the match, Alex tweeted. Thank you, to Alex, for holding on Twitter. Uh, best hire we ever made here at RSL Show. RSL takes the three points as they start Leagues Cup with a win and keep the streak going 3-0 over Sounders. Your thoughts on the match? And you guys chimed in, so we're just going to read a few of these. Andrew Lord says, RSL snuck into the playoffs almost every year for the last decade while playing square pegs in round holes. I love that. With Chicho now, everyone is finally getting to play where they play best. Were we really always only one elite striker away from consistent trophy contention? So that's a question in there. I'm gonna I would say, say no. yes. You would say, what? I'm going to say no. What? What? It's been, I'm going to say it's about Dude. 60% of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with that. But th- there's, there's a lot more pieces than just Chicha who have really stepped up and have been so vital to a, uh, to this team over the course of the last three months. Yeah. I mean, let's, you know, if we harken back to last year, how weak the middle of the park was for us. Um, Ojeda and, and Ruiz have locked that down. Now you have Palacio in there, not to mention Lawfulson, right? And, and no diss on Caldwell either, right? That area was strengthened. Our center backs were strengthened. Um, you know, not and, and days not to pass, right? Holt would have been the center back coming on. Yeah. Um, and and nothing against him, but that doesn't really inspire confidence for a lot of people, right? So there's the the squad has been improved in every area, and that striker was kind of that that final piece. Yeah. And I think it's safe to say that that Luna's emergence has probably been in the top three biggest impacts to get this team to where it's at right now. Yeah. I think that's an underrated one. Shout out Luna, Diego Luna. So happy for him. Uh, Cam Flower says, incredible effort. Just seems like the heat and elevation robbed Seattle of their will to live. They were dead out there, and RSL's game plan really maximized that. What do you guys think? Do you, does it, did it look like Seattle was just kind of defeated? From the- yeah, I mean, he, he looked like, you know... He looked like the scrawny guy that tapped on Mike Tyson's shoulder in the bar trying to fight him and then realized who it was, right? They they had no they have no idea. This is not an RSL team that they're used to playing, right? They're used to sucking in Sandy, but they're not used to, to what they got. They're used to having to control the game and, and get beat on a flute goal or whatever, but I don't think anyone's prepared for what RSL is bringing to the table right now. And even if you are game plan-wise... RSL just just grinds you down until you're not prepared anymore. Yeah, RSL had seventy percent of the possession going into the half. It's um, unreal, and, and that's not that's not Seattle. Seattle's usually the one with the seventy. Um, by the way that they play, and Russell like had seventy percent of the possession at the break. Yeah, yeah. Seattle head coach apologizing after the match, just saying, "Hey, this is not our soccer." So we apologize for the product, and y- yeah. Y- y- <laughs> You know, things are different when your head coach is apologizing to the fan base, uh, a.k.a. the best fans in the league, uh, said famously by Albert Rusnak, who probably is feeling some FOMO, dude. Imagine being Rusnak and coming back to this, dude. This is just a stacked team, bro. I feel bad for the guy. Or Freddie. Or Freddie. Right. He's looking at it going, well, where was this when I was here? You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Preston Chitty says, Inelli quickly becoming one of my favorite players right now. Chicho's just an animal out there. Ojeda put on a shift tonight. The best part is the team is just fun to watch again. Really great team performance tonight. Absolutely. Ding, ding, and ding. Dingity, ding, bro. Uh, no name at Catalyst Eric. Gotta give Mastro any credit for the subs. I've been a critic of his tactics but lately he's been proving me wrong i effing love it in all caps honestly getting proven wrong in these situations nothing better it's because we're winning yeah 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 master when he deserves uh all of the golfing in the world right now i mean he's gotta be in the in the conversation of coach of the year 
Got to be. Yeah, it's nuts, dude. Good for him, man. I, I like yeah. Pablo. I like Pablo. He's nice. He's great. Uh, let's see. Bush says, Chicho and Luna were immense in the press in the first half. And Nelly, man of the match by a mile. Alex, you agree with that? Man of the match? Like I said, he does a lot of things that I think are go unseen. Um, and a lot of what he brings, not only to the defensive side of the ball, but to the attack. Um, it's it's been very, very important to this Rossa Lake side. Um, and it's just awesome to see an, a yet another um, draft pick just blossom right in front of our eyes and become a solid, uh, important player to this team. Yep. Yeah, he makes he makes the loss of Aaron Herrera way more bearable. Which yeah. is interesting because I thought you know that, that was going to be Bodie's um, Bodie's uh, uh, spot to take. Right? It, well, I thought Bodie was going to be the one to step up and take that Aaron Herrera spot, but it's been completely out of left field. Emeka Nelly, who played striker and winger in college, come back and lock down that spot. So it's it, incredible, just awesome stuff from from uh, Emeka. Yeah, all credit to him for pulling that off. Honestly. Mecca and Nelly, you're, you're gonna have to get him back for another interview, Alex. Just kind of let's get the the after joining RSL, right? Because we got the before. Um, Loft says it was really hot in the stands. I can't even imagine playing in that game. RSL had lots of chances in their first half. Four months ago, we lose this game, but this team is a different team today, catching their stride at the right time. Agreed. Wholeheartedly agree. And with that, we will wrap up the RSL show on KSL Sports. Any other thoughts, guys? Any other comments? Any other shithousery that we want to throw out there before we wrap up? Be there Wednesday night, 7.30, Monterrey. It's going to be a good one. Josh, are you going to be at that match, dude? I'll be there. I leave, I leave for Vegas the very next day to see Manchester United, so I hope there. they send me off with a smile on my face. Very cool. I should be covering that game. I'll, I'll be working League's Cup for the league. Also, um, I have nothing to do with this, but if you guys have noticed, Major League Soccer, not only on the English side, but on the Spanish side, are giving more attention to Real Salt Lake. That's what happens when your team is winning. That's what happens uh, when you've got a nine putting goals in the back of the net. That's when you. That's what happens when you have a 10, like Severino, uh, putting goals away. So uh, winning and having keep players like this makes a difference even in visibility of the league i've noticed a lot more highlights going out from the the league which before were practically almost non-existent yep notice it as well so love it love it love it love it everybody um tweet at the rsl show let us know how much you guys love us uh yeah let us know how much you guys love us do you guys like this content tweet at us let us know uh, we'll read it on the next episode. Give us some reviews on Twitter, uh, good or bad. Um, and we will see you guys. Uh, we'll do another recap episode after Monterey. Uh, real quick, just around, let's just do predictions. I, I know we said we we're going to do this, but I just want to, for fun, for fun, okay? And, and Josh, we'll let you go last. I'm going to say that Real Salt Lake pulls off the revenge. It's going to be a tight one. And it's going to be 2-1 for Real Salt Lake. Alex. I, I don't think I can predict this one. Um, my, obvi- my brain and my heart want to say Real Salt Lake, but this is still one of the better teams in Liga Mekis. This is one of the best teams in, in Mexico, in Monterrey. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. And I think this is one of the ones that we're going to see head to PKs. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a clear winner after the ninety. Um, I think, I think Monterey could edge one out in PKs against Rasa Lake. Joshua Clark, two one Demir header to win it, cementing his legend status for Rasa. <laughs> I love that dude. Oh, I love that. I wish Demir could wear his headband during the match, dude. Or just like it's the last corner of the game. You look over and Demir's tying it. Like it's go time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Emotion. Uh, by the way, if you guys didn't know the Chicho celebration, the peace sign with the little tongue out and the wink, uh, it is confirmed. He's an anime fan. He likes anime. That's where that celebration comes from. I don't know if that's like public knowledge. It might be. They might have talked about it at some point, but um, that's what we found out the day that we went to go uh, interview him over at uh, the stadium. 
If you guys haven't caught that interview, uh, go check it out. It's all translated. It's on the RSL Show YouTube. And we'll see you again after the Monterey Cup, hopefully beating out those sons of bitches. Take it easy. We'll see you guys on the next episode.